gamers. Nintendo killed Yuzu. This is great because I actually don't know much about it. I want to learn. Tells me, Mudahar, you know, it took one week, one week for Nintendo mm -hmm. to whip out their fangs and basically take down an entire emulator, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a minute. How long has it been out? How long, how long has Yuzu been out? Surely it wasn't out for only a week. Was it only out for a week? But what's, what happened here? Years, couple years. Okay. Gentlemen, now remember a while back, a few days ago, I talked about them suing the Yuzu emulator okay. because, uh, yeah, they alleged that it was facilitating wide scale piracy, specifically for games like Tears of the Kingdom. This, this, this Nintendo masterpiece right here. I mean, Nintendo's not wrong. Now, look with Pokemon on the horizon, and uh, you know, they're Nintendo not wrong, right? We want <clears throat> some sales, we don't want people to download our games before they release and start emulating them on their Steam decks. See, here's they're the problem, though. Here's, the, here's most... the problem, and I have recently changed my mind on this topic. For those of you that say I never changed my mind, I actually changed my mind on this topic a little bit. So, the problem is sure, there is like a piracy case, right? Sure, you know, we, I, I mean. There, there, there is a case where Nintendo will be like, will have issues with their copyright because of piracy. But the issue is if I own, like, say I personally own Tears of the Kingdom, say I actually own Tears of the Kingdom, and like, I think that the Switch is shit because it is. Like, let's be real. The Switch runs like absolute dog water, right? So what if I was like, yo, I have a PC and I want to play my Tears of the Kingdom on the PC because it's going to give me a better experience, right? Because the game is going to run better on a PC. So what's the, you know what I mean? Like, I should be able to do that because I purchased the game. Does that make sense? Most popular emulators. Mm. Today, right now, if you go to yuzuemu.org, it is literally unavailable, okay? You get this message right here. Hello, users and Citra The issue fans. is that 99% the issues that 99% of emulators' uses are for piracy, true? PDS emulator right here, and yes, the website still actually functions. So if you did want to access a 3DS uh, <laughs> emulator right here, you might as well grab it before it eventually also goes away too. Don't worry. So isn't the issue with Yuzu? Hold on. So I remember before. Is this still the case where if you wanted like emulators? Okay, hold on. Let me let me think about it for a second. Okay, so before. I don't know if this is the case with Yuzu, but before you needed a BIOS file in order to run the emulator, right? So the emulator itself does not have the BIOS file. Therefore, they're not, they're not, it's, there's, there's nothing they're doing. They're, they're not doing anything to infringe on the copyright of, uh, of Sony or whatever, right? So this, did Yuzu not have that, that same thing? Did it just come bundled with the BIOS? Would you want the person to own the system in the game before running it? You know, to be honest, I, I, since I recently just kind of started to understand the implications of piracy, I think I need a little bit of time to think about that. I need a little bit of time to think about it because it's, it's kind of a complex issue. It's a complex issue because, again, we're talking about games becoming intentionally bad because of piracy. So it's like this weird loop, right, where where the, the problem of piracy is causing end products to be worse, which in turn feeds more into piracy. Do you see what I'm saying? It's a weird, like, if you're just being strictly pragmatic about it and not really moral, it, it, it actually causes this, it causes the problem again. And it makes this loop of like the problem, the solution to the problem makes the problem worse and it just keeps going. So like, while while I do think that like, you know, creators should be paid for like you know their work on something right obviously otherwise there wouldn't be games right if if you had a case where where a person just took one copy of the game and distributed it to everyone again i i think a lot of us can agree that that's bad but the problem is th is that how it works in re realistically sorry it already did mm. but anyways what they said is we write today to inform you that yuzu and yuzu support of citra are being discontinued effective immediately Yuzu and its team I see. have always they probably been, been fine. Piracy. Okay, hold on. This, this is interesting context. Bova says that they probably would have been fine if they didn't take donations for exclusive access. I see. So it's an issue of like they're actually selling it, which caused the problem. The project's yeah. in good faith, out of passion for Nintendo and its consoles and games. Uh, uh, and they're uh, not intending to cause harm. I mean, the problem, again, now. the problem here is that you're selling it, right? If, if, if this is true, I don't know if this is true, 
But if what Bravo is saying in chat is true, if they are selling it, then that it's not really the same thing, right? They took a lot of donations from Patreon. Yeah, exactly. That because our projects can circumvent Nintendo's technological protection measures and allow users to play games outside of authorized hardware. They also use a pirated copy of Tears of the Kingdom to get it running on Yuzu Day One. I see. Actually, I can see how this is a problem. They yeah. have led to extensive piracy. Now I'm gonna stop right there. I can feel the the the, the barrel of the AK-47 put up right to the head. Okay. Oh yeah, or this the, is the, gonna be the spicy. Nintendo uh, jihadists have jumped in. You know, ready to like. <laughs> Did he say the Nintendo jihadists? He's kind of not wrong though. Like some Nintendo fans are crazy. You know, they're crazy. Ready to like lay waste to these emulator developers. How did? How are you, an emulator developer, not realizing that, oh, shit, there's going to be piracy? It's going to happen. To give you an idea... Oh, no, they know. They 100% know. There's fucking no way. There's no way they don't know. And again, this is me being very objective. Yuzu did provide a step-by-step -step guide the on how to stuff circumvent on Patreon Nintendo's... And that was the kiss of death for Yuzu. Yeah, because then you're giving, uh, you're giving Nintendo leverage, right? to say that you're copyright because you're profiting off of their copyright essentially, right? Technological measures and back up your BIOS files, your production keys, mm. the necessary firmware information for the emulator to function. For quick context sake, when you downloaded Yuzu or any Switch emulator, uh -huh. it's not as if you could drop an ISO file into the emulator and whoa, it just worked out of the box. Mm -hmm. No, you needed to have an actual Nintendo Switch. You needed to run a piece of software on your actual hack Nintendo Switch, dump its firmware files, and then copy that back over to your PC plug it in the right folders, and then, then the emulator would run. Wait, so you needed to have an actual switch for it to work? But what's to prevent you from, like, downloading your friend's files? Right, like, if your friend had that same thing, like, if, you're, if your friend already ripped it for his Nintendo Switch, for his Yuzu, what's to prevent you from using your friend's? Nothing. Okay, so it's basically the BIOS thing that we're talking about. Okay. It's like downloading a PS2 emulator, PCSX2. Yes. Without the PS2 BIOS firmware file, mm -hmm. it's useless, okay? That's how it works. So again, for a lot of emulators... And that's how, they, that's how they get around the legal issue, right? Because the thing that's copyrighted is the BIOS, right? Emulators, you do <laughs> need firmware files that should be legally obtained. And I'm not going to pretend to say that a lot of people probably don't just download BIOS files randomly over the internet. Not everyone is like me, nerdy enough to have actual hardware with the actual like uh, hacks uh, available so you can back up your BIOSes yourself, right? That's true, but like what if you own it, right? Like what if you own a Switch and then you just use your friends or you use like a you download a BIOS off the internet? Like what's effectively the difference? It, it's it's, it, it's just an extra step. They just provide a program that. that can For them simulate to write this the system's now hardware. Is, it, it definitely the is like lo mm -hmm. the lawyers told them to write this, okay? This is like gun pressed to your head. In particular, we've been deeply disappointed when users have used our software to leak game content prior to its release and ruined the experience. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's a good thing. Can we at least agree on that, chat? Like, it's not a good thing for people to leak copies of a game that's not ready to come out. I don't think that's that's fair because there's a lot of people that spent a lot of time working on that game, right? And we all know that the release timeline is very important. I don't know if you, uh, well, do we know that? Do we? Do you guys know that? It's very important, like like the the timing of the release and the marketing campaign is very important for the traction of the game, and it can it can vary it can affect the actual sales of the game drastically. So if you leak a game early and it's in an unfinished state and it's absolute garbage, then it can negatively affect the actual sales of the game. For legitimate purchasers and fans. So to give you an, another bit of context, this is probably not a, a good lot idea. Of this was centered around Tears of the Kingdom. This game leaked, I want to say, two weeks before it actually launched on 4chan. Somebody in the distribution chain for the physical oh, copies no, not the internet a hate of a machine. copy of this game, went to their hacked switch, dumped the cartridge onto the internet, and then people Where's could the download Where's the picture? We need, we need a picture of a van exploding. And just plug it into these emulators. Now, at the time, this is a very key piece of context. Neither Yuzu, and I believe the Ryujinx developers, actually developed the emulator at the time 
to allow Tears of the Kingdom to run. This game would not run day one on an emulator. Okay. It did, however, work before the release date on an emulator when other people made patches and mods that you could then put into the emulator. Okay, so wait, the dev teams for the... Em Hold on. So this is not what I heard. So the, the dev the dev teams themselves did not release it. It was like it was patched by actual other people, not the not the devs of Ryu whatever it's called and, and Yuzu. Totally out of the control of the developers for this emulator and yeah. whatnot. So that's the context I wanted to provide. We have come to the decision that we cannot allow this to occur. Piracy was never our intention, and we believe that I'm sailing a ship with a with a Jolly Roger and I am in port at this uh at this nice settlement with no guards uh i don't intend to pirate <laughs> i'm just here <laughs> piracy of video games and on video game consoles Come on, man. should end effective today we'll be pulling all of our code repositories online discontinuing our patreon accounts and discord servers and soon shutting down our websites we hope our actions will be a small step towards ending piracy of all creators works so yeah, it's another bullshit statement that they had to give because the lawyers, alongside taking two point four million, yeah, 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 I, I know. But but what I'm saying is we all know it's bullshit, right? But I, I get it. Like they had to make this statement for like the lawyers and stuff. But I mean, it's very obviously bullshit. Lawyers in a settlement against these guys, they obviously most likely wanted them to to say these cute words, so to speak. And I want to stress that no matter what, even with a uh, settlement like this, because uh, they're going after the LLC, I actually don't believe that. It's kind of like, imagine if there was like a place, right? Say there was a, uh, there was a lab where they were make, they were like, Hey, like I have this idea. Like, what if we like take this virus that's like in other animals and then we like mutate it. So it affects humans. Like, wouldn't that be fucking crazy? And then like, and, and you know, like we, we never intend for it to get out there, you know, just never. Of course not. Nintendo is imagining they're going to get any money out of this. Uh, what I assume will most likely happen is uh, the Yuzu developers will, you know, declare bankruptcy. And from what I understand, at least it may not fall back onto them on a personal basis, which may be the only saving grace for them. And on the topic of, like, obviously Patreon, yes, this... I hope they set up, like, legal protections for themselves, because fuck. This uh, emulator did, in fact, use Patreon, and they did have That's the problem. locked behind, but it wasn't like, hey, here's early access. By the way, here's some extra patches for this game that hasn't been released. From my understanding, everything in the early access would always down trickle to the actual main branch. It, it doesn't matter, though. If, you, if you're, if you're, but, but it doesn't matter because regardless, if, if you're, even if you're trickling it out, it's still paying for access. Uh, that people can Does not matter at all. compile and, you know, modify themselves. Uh, now, obviously, Nintendo did mention the Patreon, and this is a factor mm. as well, too. And I mm -hmm. think it's one of the reasons why the other uh, Nintendo Switch emulator, Ryu Jinx, may not have actually been hit. I do yeah. primarily think they're mostly mad about the fact that BIOS keys are being dumped and guides are being written. Uh, but this is incredibly difficult levels of software programming. Uh, I don't personally find anything wrong with enriching yourself by developing your own emulator, uh, raising some money via Patreon. But clearly for Nintendo, you know, aside from the piracy argument, seeing a few people make it's thousands, like relink? Oh, okay. thousands of dollars a month, Thank you, building a piece of software that, you know, absolutely, uh, I would say, you know, and we, we can't be bad faith here. People did use to pirate copies of video games, mm -hmm, but obviously. ultimately, and I do maintain this, these are tools that have a really positive effect on game and hardware preservation mm. decades down the road. Also now, true. Now, the entire here, the final judgment, and of course, this was settled out of court, and the reason why this didn't go to court, and in my understanding, is because emulation and, and the tech behind it was potentially on the line legally in the United States. Remember, mm -hmm. the way a lot of these laws work is you can set really good precedents or you can set really bad precedents. And a bad precedent oh, would have been... Oh, so they were scared. They were scared because if... Because I guess it was it was shaky. This is my guess from what he's saying, is that the the argument was shaky and it was there was a not 0% possibility of them being ruled against which would fuck them for all future it would fuck them for all future uh lawsuits basically right because it would set a precedent so they didn't want to take the they didn't want to take the risk this happens a lot with guns by the way where like there'll be like a uh 
a gun law will get like challenged in the state and then they won't actually take it all the way up because they're scared that it's going to fail. And then the the level of freedom from that is going to just go to everybody else. And yeah, literal cut your losses. You couldn't allow emulators that can use BIOS files or bypass technological measures in order to use something like Yuzu. If that was the case and that was actually codified in the law, it would be pretty bad. But again, I'm not a lawyer. I highly recommend you watch a lawyer's analysis if they do cover a topic like this. I'm just an engineer at the end of the day. So here, let's go down and do it. Me too. So what they did was they mentioned how Yuzu, a video game emulator, circumvents the technological measures and allows for the play of encrypted Nintendo Switch games on devices other than a Nintendo Switch. For example, Yuzu executes code that decrypts Nintendo Switch video games, including component files, immediately before and during runtime using unauthorized copies of Nintendo Switch cryptographic keys. Mm. So for Nintendo, the argument here was the emulator is wrong because the keys that you would be required for the emulator are 100% illegal to obtain. You actually have to bypass their measures in order to get them, which is actually true in what Nintendo is saying. Mm -hmm. Now, again, legally, these things can all be true. Ethically and morally, obviously, I disagree, as do many others. See, I yeah. think when you buy a piece of hardware, it fucking belongs to you as a game does. Mm -hmm. So if I buy a, a, a Nintendo product, and remember, this is how much I don't use Nintendo devices. This is a Switch. I'm going to hit the power button in front of you guys like a million times. Does not power on whatsoever. This thing is straight dead. And do I give a fuck about plugging it in? No. When I have something like the Steam Deck, an objectively better device, this thing can keep collecting. Steam Deck is really fucking nice, by the way. It's it's just it's just heavy. It's the only issue. It's like, man, I try to like play it like while I'm lying down in bed, and like it it, it it's so heavy. And then sometimes I, I oh my god, this happens. I was playing um what was that game? Potion. Not Potionomics, but there was another one, Potion Permit or something. I was playing this 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 Doctor potion alchemy game right and i'm holding it up and i'm playing and I, I like to play games as i'm going to bed and i start to get a little tired like a little, a little sleepy and then like you know like and then they just right onto my face right onto my face and this thing is heavy collecting dust for all i care look fuck me at the end of the day all right <laughs> What it comes down to is, yes, Nintendo is technically right. Legally, they might be in the right. I would, And again, reverse engineering and bypassing DRM and, you know, any technologies like that is legally hazy. All right. There are weird precedents and they can go either or. And when I say this is complicated, I've made videos where I've talked Just about simulation strength. law and specifically reverse engineering and circumventing technological measures. It's unclear, at least to me, and it is hazy what kind of technological measures are protected, exactly what you're doing, uh, a fair use, and a lot of these other things are basically applied. Look, the DMCA is an old, tired piece of legislation. And when it comes to digital rights management and reverse engineering and bypassing measures that are used at the end of the day to create archival copies or preservations of pieces of hardware and software, these are things that they still need to go to court in order to actually solidify. A lot of the precedents that we keep listing are literally back in the days of Accolade, Sega, early Nintendo. And this mm -hmm. is where, like, again... If this case was to go to a court and Nintendo would actually get something solidified where they could say, yeah, if you're using emulation software, which is requiring a BIOS that is 100% illegally obtained, according to them, that could set a really terrible precedent. And again, nobody expects an emulator developer to go up against a multi-billion dollar company, right? It's like, imagine if RPCS3 started getting lawsuit threats by Sony. You can, in all rationality, expect them to go up against Sony, who, if they lose, if Sony legal can actually make solid cases and change the way case law is determined around the subject, could dramatically affect the landscape of emulation we know of today. Yep. This is the kind of weird world that we're into. So that's why settlements it's like, like this It's like that with everything. It's like that with all sorts of law, where precedents come and it's really hard to strike down a precedent i mean it's happened but it's it's pretty rough because what happens is it gets tossed to a judge and the judge goes oh yeah this was already decided like in this case and then like you know fucking i'm done and he just toss it back it happened and in some cases 
they may be so it's pretty hard to get it now. actually look at the end of the day a, a precedent to get a precedent down, overturned but because this is an open source project the files are still floating around there's plenty of forks still available and even if you can't use yuzu let's say that yuzu is going to be scorched earth off of the internet then you have Ryujinx and at least other projects that for now nintendo hasn't touched uh the fact that this doesn't add to like any case law or any precedent is I guess the only silver lining in the situation it really does feel that in Nintendo's eyes, Yuzu and the fact that they made money through their Patreon, the fact that they taught mm -hmm. people explicitly yeah, that was a how big to mistake. get those Switch keys is big what mistake. they were most angry about. And maybe they're preparing for the new Pokemon game. The Swamp I mean, why else Switch would they do title. that? You maybe know what I mean? Like, what? Like, if it's not about profit, if it's not about money, then why charge for it? You know what I mean? Like very obviously, there's a profit incentive there, and that's what Nintendo had a problem with. There's much possible piracy that they feel is going to happen. And this isn't obviously discounting the fact that Nintendo Switch mod chips are still alive and well, and people with first-generation Oh, switches, yeah, definitely. No matter how much Nintendo wants definitely. to patch... Uh, Bubba Bus says Nintendo could have easily pushed this much further, and they didn't. Yeah, definitely. ...the Switch firmware. Those people are always going to have modified Switches with access. Nintendo may legally be in the right, but ethically and morally, I do personally believe that when it comes to your hardware, when you've bought it, you should be allowed to modify and do whatever you want with it, okay? Provided you're not ruining the experience of other people or you're distributing illegal, like, you know, copies of games, right? Like, if you were if you were hacking a Switch to dump Tears of the Kingdom and then distribute it to people online, that's obviously wrong. We all mm -hmm. can agree on that. Uh, when you're, you know, hacking this device to you know, cheat online, you know, against multiplayer sessions, that's obviously wrong. But again, if you modify it so you own and you can dump your own games, I think that's a far cry different than anything else. God, guys, the Switch, I don't know, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but the Switch has aged so hard. Like, it, it aged incredibly fast. Like, it just already feels like such garbage. Like, even the controllers, the controllers feel awful. Like, everything feels so awful with it it's so bad again you know for people who say this is only used for piracy again i'm sure that there's people that pirate software okay through this stuff it was shit when it came out but it was like i don't know i guess it was so revolutionary and like being able to like play with people and bring a console with you anywhere uh it was so neat in that regard i think a lot of people like including me just thought like wow this is the greatest thing ever like i can take a shit while i'm playing like a console game you know but uh nowadays it's like you really feel it like when it's like worse than like your phone you know L fuck but from my personal belief i really do care about the preservation angle i know that there are fanboys who probably hate me for fucking going against nintendo here but look i bought these games okay i bought tears of the kingdom i, I mean his argument isn't bad like what why would you go after this guy for having an argument i've bought like pokemon mystery dungeon I have a whole slew of Switch games that I've bought. I buy them, I dump them, I put them on my Steam Deck, and I play them that way, okay? I think the experience is better. I have a save tool that allows me to carry my save wirelessly back and forth between my PC and my deck, so I can play a bit of Tears of the Kingdom on this, and then it auto-syncs to my computer so I can play Tears of the Kingdom on my big screen, 4K, you know, 60 frames a second, best of both worlds, right? Mm -hmm. Anyways, to go back to this uh, lawsuit, the court further orders upon Nintendo's election and to the extent controlled by defendants, the destruction by deletion of all circumvention devices, including all copies of Yuzu, all circumvention tools used for developing or using Yuzu, such as Tegra RCM GUI, Hecate Atmosphere, Lockpick RCM, ND Dump Tool, NX Dump Fuse, and Tegra Explorer. So all copies of Nintendo's cryptographic keys and production keys. So yeah, the, they're also listing all the software you would need underneath Yuzu. So again, what had happened during this and what I really think Nintendo followed the guide and have their production keys in I would say 30 minutes or less. Now it's wild too, where I think, man, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna target like YouTubers? Like there's people like Linus Tech Tips, 2.6 million viewed video. Take this down, Nintendo. I dare you. Where he not only shows you the entire process of Holy like fuck. dumping your actual jailbreak, Holy pulling fuck. the games off of it, and then also setting those same games up on a Steam Deck, a, a, a device I would consider a direct competitor to the actual like Nintendo product. Now, I'm not here wanting Linus to actually get hit, 
Uh, at the end of the day, I understand why he made this. He My mom used to be a big fan of Linus Tech Tips, and then like she said that she doesn't like him anymore. I don't know exactly what happened, but there was like some drama that happened, and like she just doesn't watch him anymore. In fact, like she went so far as to block Linus Tech Tip videos from ever appearing on our TV. They just like she went so far as to go into it and say, "Do not ever show this to me." I was like, "Holy fuck." He also has the same understanding of ethics in regards to owning your hardware and basically doing whatever you want with it. Um, but Nintendo, if they're taking down an emulator, they might even think of taking down YouTubers as well too. So if you're somebody that's making this kind of content, I would strongly reconsider Nintendo stuff. It's one of the reasons why whenever I talked about Yuzu or like emulating Nintendo stuff, mm -hmm. I would literally try not to use Nintendo games. Just because I know that's giving their legal team a little inch, a mile, so-called, whatever you want, whatever you want to say, and that's why I'd always stay away from Nintendo stuff personally. Because dude, Nintendo, Nintendo's like legal team, like almost it almost feels like some kind of cyberpunk shit. Like you know, like those big corpos in cyberpunk, they just like send people after you and just fucking kill you. It it, it almost feels like that, right? It's like the same vibe. I know my stance on emulation and game preservation, and it obviously does not align with whatever. Yeah, Arasaka, that's the one, Taz. So Arasaka. It like feels like Arasaka, doesn't it? The fuck Nintendo, the Nintendo wants, okay? Ninja. Now, there are other emulators out there, like Ryujinx, for instance, which is another Nintendo Switch emulator that is also pretty mature. You can play a lot of games on this right now. As of today, it's still actually functioning. But I am worried about this emulator, too. If you go to their guide, it says, hey, we've already assumed you've hacked your Switch and dumped your Switch keys. This link actually reads to a little wiki on their own GitHub repository where they go through the same spiel that Yuzu ended up actually getting sued for. Yeah, but so they, didn't, they, they didn't charge really, money for really it. I really, hope these companies start removing this kind of stuff because clearly you just can't have instructions on how to bypass technological measures. So, you know, yeah, Nintendo took down one of the most important pieces of tool in preservation. And look, at the end of the day, it is preservation. At some point, the Switch is going to be as old as the Super Nintendo, the PS1. Mm -hmm. And games like Tears of the Kingdom are going to be as old as games like Ocarina of Time are today. You know, at some point, okay. 20 years down the road... You but okay, okay. So here's the question, though. All right, here's the question. What if there was a law? If Nintendo said tomorrow, okay, fine. I agree with you on preser preservation. After X amount of years, you can do that. You can do this shit. But but before that, any of that gets litigated. You're fucked. Absolutely not. Do you think that the people would take that deal? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think people are still going to people are still going to pirate that shit. It has nothing to do with that. Very small percentage of it has anything to do with that. And I, I think if Nintendo actually said that, like, you know, we're okay with it. Like in a couple of years, people would not give a fuck. Probably do want to play these games and have access to them without the dependency of big corporate gaming companies. You know, there's a lot of companies like Sony that outright forget entire libraries of video games, right? Like, you know, you can't play Metal Gear Solid 4. You remember the how long it took for us to get fucking Super Mario RPG? That must have been at least 20 years. Official PlayStation stuff currently on the market. You might be able to game stream it, but that's not a viable way to ever preserve a video game. You know, it's kind of like if there was a PS5 emulator and Sony fuck. shut it down. The game came out in night, Dude, I played that game when it was on SNES. Holy fuck. Down because they're like, it facilitates piracy. And I can understand the argument, but... I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. No, no posting dates in chat. Stop it. At the end of the day, this stuff is designed in my opinion, to be preserving pieces of hardware- Stop it! Stop it! ...that have a finite lifespan on them. Look, imagine if a game like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, let's say it never got a PC release, and it's stuck entirely on the PS5. Wouldn't you want an emulator? You know, to at least down the road know that, hey, when I, when you know, 10 years later, when I can have the computer that can emulate a PS5, I can at least have that game preserved down the road. You know, it doesn't ever go missing. It's yeah, that that actually, like I was, I was watching another documentary about this, about how the Nintendo sixty four is just is is fucked soon. Like, as in, like the controllers for Nintendo sixty four, they have a shelf life on them because of the way that they're built.
I think it's like plastic. There's like a certain certain plastic parts on the inside that they just they just they die eventually. So even if you do have a Nintendo 64, eventually it will die and you will not be able to play on the Nintendo 64 hardware anymore. It's it's going to die eventually. And if this is this doesn't happen, then there's just going to be no way to play it. Stuff that I think about, right? Cuz the Switch is never going to be around forever. Those games. Robion says recently there are newer N64 controls that work well and actually look more like other controls. Well, I, I heard that like you can't get them. Like it's 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 actually been scalped to fuck. Like there's been a couple people that make that make the controllers privately that make kits so that you can actually use them. And they're fucked basically. They're 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 completely sold out. No one can get them. It's actually crazy. Yeah. You know, there's a whole depending. there's a whole underground like scalping market for like old old uh, Nintendo 64 controllers. Hang on, if Nintendo wants them back, do I have any SNES stuff? I do. Not, who knows? I do. And yeah. Hey, these are companies Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. They all use emulation for their own advantages as well too. You think the you think the virtual console is magic? No, it's all emulation. Uh huh. I don't know. I, I, I can understand not wanting piracy. I always decry piracy when I talk about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I care more about the preservation angle of it and this escalation by Nintendo. Just not good to see, man. But hey, I want to know what you guys think about it in the comment section below if you like what you saw. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that Nintendo... Uh, like, all right, here, let me, let me just poll you guys. Do you guys think that Nintendo is in the right for doing this or in the wrong? Please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it, I. I think they're in the right. Uh, uh, Chaos Shield says, I think they're in the right versus Yuzu, but if they go for uh, Ryujinx, then they're in the wrong. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of see that too. That it was because of the whole thing with the monetizing thing, right? I think that's kind of what fucked them over. Because again, even if it's, even if it's Patreon, you're still monetizing something like that, right? They go after modders who create awesome content. I mean, I heard that, you know, I heard uh, Zori that they actually go for, they go after content creators too, right? That just play the game, right? Streamers. I heard, I heard Nintendo would do that. Isn't, isn't that a thing where like they're scared? Like a lot of the big like VTuber companies are scared of Nintendo. Isn't that a thing? Like they can't even fucking, they can't even fucking play Pal World because they're so scared. I mean, here's the thing. Like, do you guys think that Project M should be allowed if you own it? So as in like, you can't actually like, like, you can't actually run like say say there was a world where you couldn't run project m without a copy of the game you think that should be allowed i think it should be allowed actually you should be able to play the game you want i think i mean it's kind of similar to like the game genie right do you guys know the game genie and the game shark like these kind of old uh what else do they have like action replay or something like these old things that you could use to modify like old games so that you could like give yourself infinite lives project m doesn't really work because you're infringing on copyright wait but didn't didn't project m just use the assets from the game well actually i guess they did add new characters to it hmm. game genie from the 80s isn't that the name of it i saw that on uh on a on a um i only know about the game genie because i uh i saw it on a show i've definitely never had a game genie and i definitely didn't use pliers to remove the to remove the plastic guards on it so i could play japanese games i wouldn't do that doesn't sound like me doesn't sound like something i would do yeah we're gonna move on because i don't i don't think this is a good conversation because this is uh i wouldn't do that you know